Wow, you had me, uh, you had me all getting the feels there for a minute. Thank you. <sighs> yeah, man, it's um. Thank you for that. You you were you were talking to me last night about <clears throat> about the texts that you had sent me. Yeah, and you said you know there were some there were some heavy texts I sent you and. And I was like, really? <laughs> and you said, yeah. And I go, did I pick up on it? And you were like, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And I, I thought you did. Well, no. When I read through them, I clearly did. Yeah, and, yeah. And just through the responses and the conversation we were having. But that that first text that you sent me, yeah. I was like, damn. And and then, I, of course, I went and... Went back on your social media looked at what you've been going through and you dropped off social media yeah, yeah. and so you had Basically reached out and said, you know, hey brother needs to lend a little air support over yeah. on this side and so What happened from I mean just you leave here from the from the last podcast two years ago You go back to Canada. Yeah, you start your podcast. That was going great. Yeah, great podcast. Oh, yeah uh Got a, you know a lot of people are listening to it getting a lot of feedback from people a lot of people hitting me like yeah Jody's podcast is great So you're doing that yeah. you're working on the other book that just came when did that book come out October last October Last October hit the shells bestseller running boom. Yeah, so but I was just, already I was already Hadn't done a podcast since May um, Actually uh, last podcast I did was with some guys from Cansoft uh, that started their own uh, company tactical beaver that was like supposed to springboard us into the next podcast. We had some other guys coming in, some other CanSoft entrepreneurs. And we were starting to like kind of shift to supporting veterans and their business opportunity. Because mm -hmm. it seems like we're all becoming entrepreneurs or the guys that will employ our friends and things like that. And that's what I want to focus on is how do we help the troops after they go through what I went through? Because I had zero plan. Nobody had really dealt with this stuff in Canada since Korea, really. Yeah. We had some guys in Bosnia and that, but the, the, the chain of command and the, and the government, frankly, lied about the fact that Canadian forces were in combat uh, in, in, the, in the former Yugoslavia. That all aside, the point is we were, we were trying to lead by, I was trying to lead by example. Luke, my, my echo, uh, Luke, was, uh, was trying to help out, and he was doing his best. And he was seeing the wheels fall off the Jody Middick machine. And he kept trying to like put them back on and gun tape them and um, just do his best though. Because him and I, it's not like we're like close buds. Like we're not like besties since we were kids or anything. So mm -hmm. he's trying to keep his distance and keep that like Jody Middick podcast is Jody Middick's and mm -hmm. I'm, I'm Luke. I could tell too. And I kept telling my friends that, you know, that we're close as well. Like I can tell he really wants to help, but he's not sure. And then one day, um, so I had a kind of a perfect storm. So I moved out of my house in October last, October 16. And, you know, I'll just get that out of the way. That was the beginning, really, mm -hmm. of things going south. And it's not because uh, my ex and I are enemies by any stretch. We're still friends. We have two amazing kids. We had amazing life. It's just sometimes, uh, you know... Sometimes these units don't mesh, right? And that's just kind of the way it went. You know, we both have different visions of our future and, and things like that. So, but then you kind of got to put on the, the face for the public, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and so I stopped going to the gym at that time. I stopped seeing my therapist just because he's on the other end of town and I can't be bothered right now. I got too many other things to do. Um, and... Even when I was here, like you said, you saw, I forgot about that walk. Mm -hmm. And you're right. I remember sitting on the wall at, yeah, on the sea wall. It, is it, is it Ocean Beach? OB, yep. And I, I love like the Amer Americana, that's what we call it in Canada. Americana history is amazing mm -hmm. to me. And the California beach, yeah. it, each beach has its own history in the, in the group. I love, and you're talking about it. And I'm looking around at all these buildings built in the 40s, 50s, 60s. And I'm, and in my mind, I drove Route 66 to get here. Mm -hmm. Like I love the history of this of this country so much. And then I was on Route 66 until I saw the Pony Express Trail is to your left, and I went okay, turned left, and I followed the Pony Express Trail down into Arizona. Um, but even then, uh, like you said, like the pain was really hitting me, and I'm terrified of the pills because of becoming addicted. And so, okay, what do you do for pain if you're not taking pills? And I'm not a weed guy. Like, I know I talk about it and mm -hmm. everything, but I don't know anything about it. But I know a lot about Crown Royal mm -hmm. and Jack Daniels. 
and uh, and Captain Morgan mm-hmm. and I are good buddies. And uh, so I found, <clears throat> I went from having a beer after work, or in my case, uh, I like cider. I know I get made fun of for it, but booze is booze, boys. You know what I'm saying? Um, oh, I can't wait to have that cider after work or that that uh, rum and coke uh, when I get to the get to the pub with the with the guys. To and the guys now, the guys that you're talking about now are your fellow people you're working with in the government. A lot of them are politicians, but also just some of the boys that, because Ottawa is like the biggest military posting in Canada. Oh, okay. But also all the Kansas are in that area. Got it. So I got, you know, buddies that are coming back from deployment in Iraq uh, on and off, and they come in, they're home for a month, they're gone for three, home for three, gone for a month. They, so whenever you get it, you hear from them, you run out, and of course, they just got back from the sandbox, so mm-hmm. they want to have a beer or two. Mm-hmm. And, you know, and I'm like, okay, because it might, like, I'm going, going, going. I get up at six, put on my suit, go to work, uh, come home, and I'm in pain the whole time. And from the pain you saw to October 2016, and then come spring 2017 now, it's just, it's reached points where I wouldn't, but I was thinking about drinking before work. Mm-hmm. And it's not because I'm like stressed out, and I was stressed out, but it's more like, oh man, like my, because I, you, the, there is a deadening of the of the yeah, pain. For sure. And it's like, well, Uber ride is only 12 bucks to get to work and this and that. Or my staff drives right by my place to go so I could have her pick me up. And that discipline kept me from doing that for a while. And then I had a, a trip to Oregon to go shooting at the Leopold Shooting Academy they opened there. That was great. But before I left, I think I took my legs off for a solid three to four weeks. And I was in my wheelchair. And that kind of sucked because my car isn't set up to drive. You know, my place I got, which is like a block from the house, so it's not that far from the kids and, and the ex and everything. So, you know, I'm seeing them a lot uh, anyway and stuff, but nothing else in my life is set up to live without legs. Even like where I keep my coffee in the kitchen is for when I'm on my legs. Mm-hmm. So I'm in my I'm in my wheelchair the first day and I'm like, oh, I don't really make coffee when I'm in my wheelchair, do I? Oh, tongs, right? So I get tongs out of the cupboard, reach off. I can do this, whatever, adapt. And then it's like, okay, time to go to work. Oh, shoot. And then I did call my staff and she picked me up or I took an Uber. But then I went to Oregon and that was a week, like it was about uh, seven, eight, nine, day, nine days on my legs straight. Excruciating pain the whole time. Whatever was happening, the doctor, I finally went back and she said that like my skin had reached a point where it couldn't regenerate fast enough. So it was just breaking down. And then the way I like to wear my legs was being rejected by the body. So I like to wear with like, it's called a suction, a suction hold. So it's like a vacuum until you release it with a, with a valve. And my body was like, well, we're done with this. But I'm like, oh, no, me no like, leg, leg sleeve, leg sleeve, take away mobility, me no want. And so my, you know, that if you're going to be t- dumb, you better be tough. You're going to be stupid, comes, you got to be tough. Yeah. <laughs> And, you know, and, 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 and I didn't have, I'm not living with, with a medic anymore. Right. So she's not there to be like, Hey, stupid, put yourself, like take the legs off and and let someone take care of you. My mom actually moved to Ottawa, December 16, and I'm completely ignoring her advice. Cause you know what mom, mom's always going to try and look after you, but come on, mom, I'm 40 years old. Jesus. Um, and I was pushing away against a lot of the same, same things I, would then in the same day would tell people like, Hey man, you got to let people look after you, you know, cause I get texts. I'm probably same as you, right? I get texts, BBMs. I get DMS on Instagram and, and Twitter and Facebook f- on my fan page. And the, and then the podcast page, uh, Hey, what's going on? Like, I need help with this. And I'd be like, don't be afraid to go get help. Don't be afraid to reach out. Those around you love you. Let them look after. And I'm completely ignoring any of this advice myself. Cause I'm like, I kicked Oxycontin. When I was 22, I think, and on deployment, I stopped smoking just because I wanted to. Uh, I drink on the weekend. I don't need to drink. But meanwhile, I'm sitting there checking these messages while having a drink. <laughs> I know. <laughs> and I look back, and I'm like, I'm so stupid. But it, I guess sometimes you got to go through. There's a reason why you go back to basics. Is there, is there like in your mind when you're going through that, are you thinking to yourself, I could stop if I wanted oh, to. Every I day. just don't want to. Yeah. I don't. It's not getting in the way of anything. 
I'm still functional. Mm -hmm. I'm still at work. I'm still doing, to me, my main job was what I was elected to do, right? And I have a four year, in my mind, it's a, it's like, it's kind of like being in the army where you're on four year, four year commitments. Right. So I'm like, well, right now I have a four year commitment. I'm not drinking at work. I mean, at some point I did start drinking at work, but in politics and business, as you know, like sometimes after lunch, instead of going back to the office, you have a beer and you're still working. Mm -hmm. You're still talking about issues. You're still getting, like I used to get a lot of advice from, I shouldn't say used to, I I get a lot of advice from the other more experienced politicians because that's what you do. Mm -hmm. And we all would have a beer or a cider and then they'd go back to the office and I'd stay and keep on the phone and yeah, I'll have one more, you know? And then another group of guys would come in from like, oh, hey, uh, you're still here? Like, you know, so-and-so is already back at City Hall. What kind of what kind of drunk are you? Happy. I'm a happy-go-lucky. I get a little loud, but it's not like I'm like, hey, what's going on? Blah, blah, blah. Um, but, they're, you know, anyway, well, I know what you're no, asking. No, no, no. I'm actually just asking. It, I'm, like, you could you could still call on the phone and be like, oh. hey, buddy, blah, blah, blah. You know, some people, when they drink, they get angry. Some people, yeah, when they no. drink, they slur their speech really bad. Yeah, So no. you got all these different types you can, of, dr- you know, drinkers. Yeah. When I drink, I basically just, like, am more of... Jocko. Yeah. 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 I'm more Jody. Yeah. yeah. For the most part, I do slur, but even I can, I'll be like, ah, I'm slurring my words. All right. Okay. <laughs> well, hey, I'll, I'll drink some water for a minute and then I'll get it back or I'll have a coffee. Um, and I'm good. I'm no, I'm normally, and even when I'm like, I rarely get fall over drunk, mm-hmm. right? If ever, but just let me rewind. I know it's a long answer to a short question, but so may I get back from Oregon and I'm just like dying. And then I had to go real quick down to Albany because of part of my job with the city is I'm the sports commissioner and I'm desperately trying to get the CrossFit games to bring the Eastern regional games to Ottawa because I just think that'd be awesome to have in Ottawa. We, you know, we got the UFC in, in Ottawa. I was a part of that. So I was really proud. And I said, when I got the job, I said, I want to do two things in the four years, get the UFC and get the CrossFit games. So I'm still trying to do the CrossFit games. I got less than a year to do it, but I think we can do it. But anyway, that's There's a lot of people that uh, participate in CrossFit that listen to this podcast. Maybe they yeah, can start well, a little I've movement. Met, I've met a lot of them, and you know what? The CrossFit guys are crafty. In Albany City itself, they don't want to lose the CrossFit games, so they knew I was in town, and they mm. started to sweeten in the deal, if you know what I mean. And the CrossFit games go, well, Ottawa's offering us this, Albany. What you got? <laughs> hey, it's business. I get it. But you know what? I'm coming back. Um I got back from that trip. That was about a four-day trip from Ottawa to Albany and back. And when I was here with you guys, I didn't bring a wheelchair. And that's what I meant by I crawl around, which is yeah. why I could stay at your house, but I don't want your kids seeing a grown man crawl to the bathroom. And it's not because I'm above crawling. It's just it's one of those personal things. In my own space, I'm not above it. And around like loved ones, okay, so that's why you want your own space and even uh, and stuff like that. So even when I visit my dad, I get a hotel room. You know, my dad loves me, and it's, I'm not. But it's also my space. Or if I want to crawl around naked, I can, mm-hmm. right? And so anyway, that's why that. So then I get back, and I'm I take the legs off, and I just I can't put them back on. I look. I would like. I don't know if I said it on your show last time, but I have mornings where I look at my prosthetics. And I'm like, oh, fuck. Sorry. Sorry for swearing. I know we're allowed, but I'm trying to be a little bit better of a man, Echo. Oh, man. You know what I mean? Doing you know what I mean, Echo? I don't yeah. want you having to edit out things that I say. <laughs> oh, good. So, You're doing great. Yeah. Um, I took them off and I just looked, I just threw them across the room. I said, I can't deal. I have a wound in my left stump. Uh, did I show it to you? No. It's been there since April of 14. And it happened, I remember the second it happened, my brother and I were doing an amazing race thing post-show in Alberta. And we did a little like, you know, go, hey, Jody and Corey from Amazing Race, woo, we got a few bucks for it. And we gave a speech to uh, some con- convention. And then I was walking down the airport to, to the plane and I felt something go on my foot. It's And it's like having a hot spot when you're on a ruck mm-hmm. march or whatever except I can't really shift what part of my foot I'm walking on. I, I just can't. Mm-hmm. And it went from a little tiny like break in the skin to something the size. In Canada, we have toonies. It's $2. Mm-hmm. 
Mm. You, I know you guys still use the like dollar bill. Like a 50 bill. cent piece it's or like something. Like a 50 yeah. cent piece. And then back now it's down to like a pin prick of scab. But that's, what are we talking now? We're uh, almost four years, right? And I had to mitigate that the whole time. And it was painful. And I got a couple, inf- I got two infections in, in the four years from it. But that's where I was like, that's it. I need to let myself heal. I need to like let my body regenerate. Except now from that, and it took me until fall, late fall, to realize that when I did that, I might as well have stepped on another landmine. And I went through, it took me to late fall to go, because I was like, because that's when things really went south. Because you basically, not even basically, because you lost your legs again. Yeah. I lost my legs again, except because truly when you were down here, even though you were in pain, bro, we were doing, you know, we were walking up and down stairs. We were, we were doing whatever. We walked all over that yeah, aircraft walked carrier. Walked over that aircraft carrier up and down stairs. We walked all over the SEAL compound. Yeah. We walked, through, you know, we. I loved it. Yeah. I went out on the beach. To, when we walked out on the beach <laughs> where you guys torture the, the, the recruits. Yeah. <laughs> in every step I was like, because uh, 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 yeah. you got to dig through the sand. Yeah. But. To me, that's hollowed ground, bro. Like, yeah. like when you took me to the grinder, I remember standing there like, "This is the grinder." Like, <laughs> I'm a Canadian, I'm Canadian Army, and but there's some things where you go, you just you feel yeah. right. If I brought you up to the recruit spot and for basic in the Canadian Army, you'd be you'd, you'd feel you get that feeling like this is where soldiers are born. Yeah, that's it. So I was know? gonna say there's been a lot of those little. They have the little fins on the grinder. So the, what what Jody's talking about is where they train seals. That first through, day through in, the, in the movies, right? Yeah, 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 it's, yeah. It's, and they have little fins, so like little dive fins. Mm. There's little, 40, you know, in the Marine Corps, they have boots. Yeah, yeah. In the Army, they have boots yeah. painted on the ground. They paint them on the ground. Mm. Well, in the, at the grinder at Bud's, they have little swim fins. Two little yeah. tiny swim fins are painted, mm. and there's you know, a couple hundred of them, and that's when you get out there for PT, you stand on your little set of swim yeah. fins. And then okay. as the days go by, there's less and less of you, yeah, right? And, less and, less. and then, and I've read, a, I've read, if I've read less than 24 Navy SEAL books from <laughs> from the beginning to today, right, mm-hmm. yours included, I'd be surprised. I've read, I've read the, uh, the old LERPs, right? Mm-hmm. I've read about those guys. I've read about the original Rangers. I've read about the Canadian... Um, uh, American Special Service Force. Actually, when I was with Rob, my buddy from the Green Berets down in Yuma, I was wearing a Ranger Up t-shirt that's like a Special Service Force tribute. Mm-hmm. You know, to me, like, that's our history. That's the history yeah. of, of, of of soft in Canada and the U.S. And, 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 and then, you know, and Buds and the Green Berets, or Navy SEALs and the Green Berets were kind of created by Kennedy at the same... Blah, see, look at me. I'm a, I'm a fucking nerd when it comes to this stuff. <laughs> so you to know, me... You know, the uh, I haven't been there. But I've heard about it because a lot of my friends have been there. The Aussies, they have a parade ground like yeah. in the middle of their compound. Have you been there? No, I've never been to Australia. They're the the only time they use this parade ground apparently is at memorial services for their men. Yeah, and I believe that no one walks on it. It's just in the middle of their compound. No one walks yeah. on it. Well, in Canada, we have a similar thing where if you're on the parade square and it's not parade. Like you're going on extra duty. Mm-hmm. Like if the sergeant major catches you on his parade square, a you better be have a broom in your hand, <laughs> or you better be on parade. And if you're not, like, because it's because it's usually like, oh, if I go from here to there, it's right across the parade right, square, right. but it's the short route. Yeah, and it's like one of those tests, right? They're yeah. the new guys. In the hallways of most units, the the unit uh, emblem is in the floor, mm-hmm. and and there's one of those sergeants. That just has nothing better to do but to stand there and watch and see who steps on the... Who, and even if you're like family of one of the troops, <laughs> what are you doing on my, pre- on my hat badge? And you get the knife hand. It's awesome. But when I was here, I wasn't going to not go see the grinder because yeah, my course. fucking legs hurt. Yeah. Don't be a pussy. And I, I'll be honest, that first night after you dropped me off, I had a couple drinks to ease, to ease the day. Mm-hmm. Like when we left your porch and you dropped me back at the, at the hotel. Yeah. Um... I, I went and I had a few drinks at the hotel bar, you know, and I and I I was actually toying with talking to you about this stuff back mm-hmm. then because it was bugging me then. And I'm like, okay, what do I do? Who do I talk to? Jocko's the kind of guy, Echo is the kind of energy you want to be around and like, you know, and that's one of this part of this this trip for the last ten days I've been on is kinda of like refining so a lot of my Canadian and American friends that have kept me on on the straight and narrow. Mm-hmm. Or as much as you can to, for Jody Middick. And um, 
<laughs> oh, bro, it's a constant wrestling match, right? The little evil and the good angel, except a lot of times they high-five each other and go, okay, let's see what happens. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and, uh, and yeah, man, so when the legs came off, so no car, so now my mommy, Uber, or my staff, or my ex are driving me around. All happy to do it, all not yeah. like holding it against me, but at the same time, man, I, I'm out of sandwich meat. Hmm. Okay, now I need to go to the store. Hey, mommy, can can you drive my car and take me to the store? And and then that's I kind of turned my hat backwards and kind of like you know tried to like you know cowboy up and, and do it. But I took me again till man. My daughter turned nine September nineteenth. I think it was her. I missed a lot of her birthday from being hungover. And she was at this awesome trampoline place, and I'm in a wheelchair. And I remember getting there and being like, all I want to do right now is jump on trampolines with my with my little girl. And I can't, A, and B, I'm an hour and a half late for her party uh, because I decided to have too many drinks last night. And that was when I was like, what the fuck is really wrong with me? Because I couldn't really get it. And then... what is What is the escalation, right? So you were down here with me. Yeah. You know, we worked hard. We, because it's it is you know doing a podcast like when 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 we do sit there and talk to each other about intense stuff for five yeah, hours, yeah. then we went and ate, we stayed up late, we get up early the next day, we go do all the stuff that we did, yeah. and you get done, you have a couple drinks, right? W- what does that escalation look like over time? Where, where you're like, you know what? You're not even saying like, oh, I don't know if I should have drinks. You're like, hey, as soon as Jocko gets in his car, I'm getting some drinks right now. Is yeah. it something that you recognized? Is it something that you just well, you just said to yourself, you know what, this is going to make me feel better right now, and I got to go. I, gotta I do don't it. remember exactly what month I was here. Do you? Like, no, I, I don't remember. No, I know it was a warm month in in Canada. Like it was cool, but it was spring or fall. Well, we started in December. It was twenty four yeah. podcasts in. That's how many December weeks? of what two thousand fifteen. So it must have been spring for fifth uh, sixteen. Yeah, yeah spring, spring sixteen. So. Because I remember in Canada it wasn't cold, but like we were wearing, still wearing down vests with with hoodies and stuff. Uh, when I was doing my quick podcast before I left, so at that time I was, it was just the pain was just kind of like a couple drinks before bed, right? Mm-hmm. But even that was bugging me, and that's what I mean. Like when I was, but then like if 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 it had been this spring where we had met, yeah, I would have been like. Like this the whole time and like as soon as Jocko's gone I might have just like last night when we had dinner I might have just been like fuck it I'm having drinks yeah. I don't care if Jocko's here Because being around someone like you like, And I used to be the guy who could I don't need to drink I'd go months and be like oh yeah I haven't had a drink Like you know I'll have a drink And 